Hey everyone, and welcome to today's Protocol Lab Research Seminar. Today we are joined by Shobek Deb. Uh, Shobek is currently a second year PhD student at the University of Washington in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Previously, he worked as an industrial researcher at NEC Corporation in Japan, working on the state-of-the-art signal processing modules for 5G technology. Before that, he graduated from the Indian Institute of Technology in Bombay uh, with a dual degree, uh, bachelor's and master's in electrical engineering and completed his thesis on frugal 5G. Uh, and today he's going to be talking to us about his work titled POSAT, uh, Proof Work Availability and Unpredictability Without the Work. So Shobek, I'm going to hand it over to you and away we go. Thank you for the introduction. Thanks everyone for coming to this talk. So today I'll be talking about uh, POSET, which is the first uh, provably secure proof of stake uh, um, blockchain protocol that achieves both dynamic availability and unpredictability. Um, uh, this is a joint work with my advisor, Shriram, Professor Shriram Kandan from University of Washington, Seattle, and Professor David C. from Stanford University. Here will be the flow of the talk. So we'll first go through the uh, introduction to the problem that we try to solve in this work. Then we'll go to the des protocol description of the POSET. And then we finally will uh, understand the proof behind the security of the POSET. Before going to POSET, uh, let us understand what are the key features of Bitcoin that we try to emulate into the uh, proof of stake protocol. So Bitcoin achieves three key properties. It is secure under honest majority while guaranteeing dynamic availability and unpredictability. The question that we ask in this work is that can one design a proof of stake protocol that can also achieve all these three properties or not? So before answering this question, uh, let us understand uh, dynamic availability and unpredictability in the context of Bitcoin and the existing proof of stake protocol. Dynamic availability in Bitcoin can be best understood uh, for, from the evolution of Bitcoin's total hash rate since its conception. This total hash rate that comprises of both uh, honest and adversarial computational power in the system at any time has seen a 14 orders of magnitude change since its inception. As an indicator of its dynamic availability, the Bitcoin protocol has been continuously adding transactions to the ledger for the past 11 or 12 years. The main characteristic about Bitcoin guaranteeing dynamic availability is that it remains secure under honest majority. To be precise, consider that in the first year of the operation of the Bitcoin, all of the nodes in the system are honest. Consequently, the system uh, evolves to give this snapshot of blockchain at the end of the first year. At the beginning of the second year, the adversary joins the system. Although the resulting adversarial hash rate is less than the honest adversarial, adversarial hash rate in the second year, the second year adversarial hash rate is much higher than the first year honest hash rate. Now, what the adversary can do is that it can try to rewrite history by going back in time and uh, mining blocks for the time when it was not online. Uh, and in order to overwhelm the uh, existing public canonical chain. However, in Bitcoin, the probability of mining block is directly proportional to the computational power. So the canonical chain also involves, invo evolves in that time. And so the adversary will never be able to rewrite the history and able to catch up with the canonical chain. Thus, it is safe for Bitcoin to guarantee dynamic availability of all nodes that is, uh, to all nodes uh, to be able to join the system irrespective of whether that node is uh, honest or adversarial. Now the question we ask is that whether a proof of stake protocol can also guarantee the same or not. Let us first see how existing proof of stake protocols try to answer it. In the context of dynamic availability in proof of stake protocols, the sleepy model of consensus, like sleepy model of consensus, Snow White and Ouroboros Genesis, they have used uh, longest chain protocol in an attempt to uh, guarantee dynamic availability. However, without careful design, the longest chain protocol, uh, protocols in proof of stake are vulnerable to costless simulation attack. Let us see how this costless simulation attack works. Similar as before, consider that the adversary joins the 
uh, network in the beginning of the second year. And although the adversarial stake is less than the honest stake in second year, uh, uh, the second year adversarial stake is still higher than the first year honest stake. Now the adversary can use its uh, second year stake to almost instantaneously uh, uh, participate in the past lotteries to win blocks all the way back to the genesis and then grow a chain there from the genesis that surpasses the current longest chain. So this is possible in proof of stake protocol because there is no notion of arrow of time in proof of stake protocol. In contrast in Bitcoin, each node had to uh, do some computational work to propose blocks and that, uh, that imbued a notion of arrow of time in the uh, system. So the, the, due to the absence of this uh, notion of arrow of time cost proof of stake protocol, this costless simulation attack is possible, wherein a newly joined node not only increase the current adversarial stake, but effectively increase the past online adversarial stake as well. I'd like to point out that even using verifiable random function is not enough to guarantee defend against this kind of costless simulation attack. So sleepy model of consensus and Ouroboros genesis have sidestepped this attack uh, by assuming that the adversarial stake is constant while honest stake can vary. In context of Bitcoin, this will be akin to assuming that the adversarial mining power is uh, fixed at genesis. There's a, bit, there's a question of whether a proof of stake protocol can guarantee dynamic availability, just like in Bitcoin or not is left unanswered. As for unpredictability in Bitcoin, uh, due to proof of work mining, no node, including itself, can predict when uh, a node will be able to mine a block. For illustration, consider this blockchain in the Bitcoin. In Bitcoin, for mining the next block, a node has to keep trying different nonsense until the proof of work puzzle is satisfied. However, the node does not know when will it satisfy the puzzle. Neither does some adversarial node can predict when this node will be able to mine a block. Only after the node finally satisfies the puzzle, does everyone know that the node is, has been able to mine a block. Thus, the Bitcoin mining process is totally unpredictable. For proof of stake protocols, commenting about unpredictability is a bit more complicated. If a nice proof of stake puzzle, like a hash function, is used for determining the win winner of the lottery, then everyone can predict who wins when. This makes the system vulnerable to bribery attacks. On the other hand, if more sophisticated puzzle, like a verifiable random function is used, as suggested in this many, many of these papers, then no one can predict who wins except the winner itself. However, now an adversarial node can advertise its prospects of winning in the future lotteries uh, in, the, in some black market. Thus, Bitcoin-like unpredictability is still elusive in proof-of-stake protocols. So the main contribution of our work is that we present POSET, the first proof of stake protocols that guarantee both proof of work style dynamic availability and proof of work style unpredictability while being provably secure under honest majority. So let's go through the protocol description of this one. So in order to achieve uh, dynamic availability and unpredictability in the POSET, we use verifiable delay functions for conducting the lottery. So what is this verifiable delay functions or VDF as it's called in short? So it's a tuple of three functions, the setup function, the evolve function, and the verify function. There are two key properties that motiv motivated us to consider uh, VDF for the purpose of conducting the leader election. Computing evolve function of VDF, even with parallel processors, takes at best linear time and no less than that. However, the verification of the work done in the evolve function, done in computing the evolve function, can be done blazingly fast in polylogarithmic step. With these two properties, uh, it ensures that the VDF computation is not costlessly computable. It gives an unpredictable randomness beacon. Now, let us see uh, how POSET uses this VDF. For this, let us first recall the proof of work mining in Bitcoin. Consider this blockchain. Suppose a new node at the tip of the uh, blockchain is received at a node. Uh, uh, under proof of work, a node will select a nonce at random. This nonce will be used to check whether the proof of work puzzle is satisfied or not. If no, 
then the uh, node will select another nonce at random. So, if yes, uh, the, if the proof of work puzzle is satisfied, then the node is able to append a block at the tip of the blockchain. In POSET, uh, instead of proof of work puzzle, we use a VDF puzzle that is constructed from the evolved function of the VDF. Now when a block is received, a non source of randomness RAND source is extracted from the block and check whether the VDF puzzle is difficulty is satisfied or not for this updated RAND source. If the POSET puzzle is not satisfied, then the updated RAND source is sent again to the VDF puzzle. If yes, then the, uh, then the updated RAND source, uh, then, then the block is uh, proposed and the updated RAND source is embedded in that block. The actual evolved function of VDF that is used in conducting the lottery uh, to propose the next block uh, follows this iterative template. To summarize, in POSET, for conducting the lottery to propose a block, the randomness embedded in the parent block is used uh, as the source of randomness. Uh, in order to propose the first block after the genesis, the node will use the randomness RLG uh, embedded in the genesis block as a, uh, to compute the evolve function and uh, and uh, to compute the evolve function and the winner will embed the updated randomness rs1 into that block similarly for proposing the second block uh, the nodes will use the randomness rs1 from the uh, embedded in the block 1 to compute the evolve function for compute, for proposing block 2 and so on however uh, this block by block uh, update of a source of randomness gives an adversary many more uh, random chances, independent random chances to increase the growth rate of the private adversarial chain. To concretize this intuition, uh, uh, consider an adversary that is trying to create a longer private fork from the genesis. As each block offers an independent source of randomness and due to nothing at stake phenomenon, the ad adversary will grind on all the blocks on the public canonical chain uh, um, um, by the parallel execution of multiple verifiable delay functions. So as expected, the long the growth the growth rate of the longest chain is uh, is directly proportional to the honest state. However, the growth rate of the um, growth rate of the adversarial tree instead of being just proportional to the adversarial state, it is amplified by a factor e. So extrapolating this nothing at stake attack. Um, that leverages this block by block update of randomness, the adversary can grow trees on all blocks in the honest chain, with each of them having an amplification factor E on their growth rate. For the adversarial trees that are far, for the adversarial trees that are far from the tip of the longest chain, they are less likely to catch up with the, with the uh, public canonical chain. But the trees that are close by, uh, they can more. They are more likely to catch up due to randomness. Uh, so this looks scary, as it seems like that the adversary would always succeed in this private adversarial attack. However, uh, the good news is that for uh, adversarial stake faction beta less than one by one plus e, if if one waits for a sufficiently long time, one can find this this uh, special green block in the longest chain, such that with high probability no adversarial tree uh, starting from any of its ancestral block would be able, able to catch up with the longest chain containing this green block. Thus going forward, this green block will always be present in the prefix of the longest chain. Such a phenomenon is called as convergence in the literature. So for beta, adversarial stake fraction, stake fraction beta less than one by one plus E, with block by block update of source of randomness, OSET is secure against uh, private attack. However, uh, Bitcoin is secure against private attack for all beta less than half. So as we are trying to replicate the properties of Bitcoin in proof of stake, the obvious question would be whether we can push the security threshold for POSET to one half or not. This, would make, uh, this will make POSET guarantee similar security as Bitcoin. To do so, the natural uh, question uh, step would be, can we, up, can we have a less frequent update of randomness that can push the security threshold against private attack to post it half or not? So we find out that 
the answer is yes. So with less frequent update of source of randomness, uh, the source of randomness required for computing the eval function of VDF for proposing the next block is updated once every C for illustration. Consider uh, this blockchain um, with resulting randomness uh, from the computation of eval functions for each block being also depicted. Consider epoch of C consecutive blocks. Then under the idea of less frequent update of the source of randomness, the randomness embedded in the genesis block is used as source randomness for computing the eval function for each block in epoch one. For blocks in epoch two, the randomness embedded in the last block of the epoch one is used as source randomness and so on. This changes the modus operandi for how any node, any new node can join the system. So uh, now, uh, now assuming that the, all the VDS are of the same speed, if an honest node joins at the middle of the epoch, it would never be able to participate in the evolution of the system as its VDF will be always be, uh, lagging behind the VDF for the existing nodes. So any new node uh, has to wait until the end of the current epoch and then they can start participating in the evolution of the system. So now by controlling how frequently the source of randomness is updated, that is by tuning the value of C, uh, one can control the amplification factor phi C of the growth rate of the adversarial tree. For instance, for C equals to one, we go back to our original case of updating source of randomness in every block, which gives the highest amplification factor. For C equals to two, the amplification factor is decreased. For C equals to three, the amplification factor is decreased even further. We show that the amplification factor is a decreasing function on C. Eventually for C tending to infinity, we have amplification factor approach one, which is also the case in uh, Bitcoin. So now the question is that with randomness being fixed uh, for C box, is unpredictability even possible or not? And the short answer is in POSET with its careful design, it still retains its unpredictability. Let's understand how. Consider this to be the state of the blockchain with RS0 being the randomness embedded in the last block of the epoch. Now, after receiving this last block, any node will start evaluating the eval function of VDF with RS0 being the source of randomness. The VDF guarantees that the, 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 the guarantees the, the, the unpredictability when the, when this and a node will be able to become the winner of the lottery. Suppose that a node is able to win the lottery and propose a block with randomness RS1 embedded in it. Now, the, now this node will start evaluating the eval function of VDF with RS1 being the new source of randomness. So this new computation can be thought of as a continuation of the computation that has been done since the beginning of the epoch. Again, the VDF the randomness in VDF guarantees the unpredictability when this node can be can win the next lottery. Incorporating all these design choices, we finally present the main theorem that uh, guarantees security for POSAT while ensuring dynamic availability and unpredictability. So for some time t, consider all those honest stakes that have been online in the system since at least time t minus bit theta c. Represent them by lambda at ct. We assume that this lambda at ct uh, is upper bounded by uh, lambda max, which is a valid assumption in the proof of stake system. Let lambda at be the uh, be all adversarial stake online at time t. Let delta be the network delay. Then, if this condition is satisfied, if this big condition is satisfied, uh, then uh, we can show that the poset is secure against the private uh, adversarial attacks. I'd like to point out that uh, using proof techniques from everything is a race paper, uh, like uh, uh, the techniques like block tree partitioning and Nakamoto blocks, we provide a security proof that shows that this security theorem holds true for all spectrum of attacks and not just private adversarial attack that we have discussed in the previous slide. So let us see how to prove this security theorem for all attacks. In order to uh, uh, prove the security of POSAT, a series of four system transformations are done in such a manner so that if the security at the system, so that if the system at the end of the fourth transformation is secure with high probability, 
then the original system that is POSET is also secure with high probability. With the system at the fourth uh, transformation, it is much easier to analyze the security using tools based on branching random box from everything is a waste paper. So the first system transformation is imp important for incorporating all possible uh, adversarial attack and not just the private adversarial attack. To appreciate it, we start with the simple scenario of private adversarial attack. Consider this public canonical chain where each of the blocks uh, have been made by honest tools. Let us consider this uh, on, uh, honest block H1 and see how private adversarial attack against this block works. Under private adversarial attack, the adversarial nodes would only make private adversarial chain from one of the ancestral blocks of H1 and make it public once it becomes longer than the canonical public chain. At this point, uh, this adversarial chain would become the public canonical chain. This affects the liveness and the persistence of transactions in the block H1. Due to nothing at stake, the adversarial nodes can mine many more private adversarial uh, chains. In order to show that the system remains secure, that its block H1 is persistent and live, it is clear that one has to uh, evaluate the growth of the canonical chain and all, and all possible adversarial or private adversarial chains and show that the canonical uh, canonical um, and show that the canonical honest chain always grows at a faster rate than all private adversarial chains for all time. However, in reality, uh, the blockchain is a mixture of uh, blocks mined by adversarial and honest uh, nodes. There is uh, forking going on among honest blocks due to latency, and some of the adversarial could be public, some of the adversarial blocks might be private. So we need a clean way to evaluate this, uh, this uh, uh, growth rate of the adversarial trees and the, uh, and the, and the honest, uh, honest blocks. This is where the first system transformation comes into the picture. For this uh, transformation, we consider an hypothetical uh, uh, omnipresent viewer who is able to see all blo block mining, honest or adversarial, without any network latency with a global clock in hand. Assume this uh, time axis of the global clock, which starts at time zero. The Genesis block is considered to be honest and it's put into this fictitious system Dyn1 uh, at the beginning. Suppose the next uh, uh, honest block H2 was mined uh, after a time uh, that is more than the network latency uh, delta AV from the previous honest block H1. So in this case, we append this block H2 to the fictitious honest chain in the system Dyn1. Similarly for this block H3, which has been mined more than network latency delta away from the block H2. On the other hand, if, the, if this honest block H, uh, if an honest block is made uh, less than network latency delta away from this uh, honest, previous honest block H3, then it is put in the same level as the previous honest block in this uh, fictitious system Dyn1. As for the adversarial blocks, all adversarial blocks that are reachable from the honest block H1 uh, without going to another honest block is put as an adversarial tree rooted in the block H1. So similarly for this um, uh, adversarial block in the, in the, in the, on the left-hand side, which is reachable from the honest block H2 without going to any other honest block is put as an adversarial tree rooted in the block H2 in this fictitious system time one. So now this view uh, uh, resembles the system view in the simple scenario of the private adversarial attack. So let us see what do we get from this system transformation. Consider this uh, fictitious uh, honest chain in the Dyn1 system. Consider this honest block J and consider this to be the depth of the fictitious chain uh, going through this uh, fictitious chain going through this honest block J in time T. Suppose these are the length of the all the adversarial trees rooted in the ancestral block blocks of the block J at time T. Then uh, this block, green block J is called Nakamoto block. Uh, if the depth of the uh, depth of the honest fictitious chain is longer than the than all adversarial trees rooted in the previous honest blocks for all time T. 
presence of nakamoto block in the fictitious system indicates uh, that the prefix of the block j in the original system denoted here by this prefix denoted by the cj uh, uh, persist in the will persist in the canonical chain for all time t therefore uh, for any time t, uh, therefore for any time t and uh, for sufficiently long interval length s we want to show that that uh, that under some conditions uh, there exists an nakamoto block within this interval with high probability that would imply that there will be frequent occurrence of nakamoto blocks which would indicate the liveness in the original system system so using remaining system transformation uh, we want to show we show that the probability of non existence of nakamoto block in in a sufficiently long interval at any time t is negligible so the second system transformation removes the mining lag uh, let us understand what is this mining lag uh, consider this fictitious uh, honest chain at some time t if a new node uh, joins the system uh, it cannot participate in the evolution of the honest chain immediately as we discussed before in the poset protocol so it has to wait until the end of the current epoch epoch to be able to participate that implies that the uh, that the honest stake uh, that participates in mining remains constant within the epochs and any analysis would have to take into consideration this timing random variable this leads to the complexity in the analysis so dine to system removes this uh, dependency in dine to system the honest stake can participate in the evolution of the honest chain if they had been active since at least certain sigma c time we show that the probability that there exists no nakamoto block within the interval of length s in dine 1 system is closely approximated by that in system dine 2 for the third transformation we go from a dynamic system to a static system so again consider this snapshot of the uh, dine 2 system observe that in uh, that in dine 2 system honest stake that can participate in evolution of the system can vary with time similarly the adversarial stake that can participate in the evolution of the system can also vary with time this time varying nature uh, of the stake makes the analysis complicated however uh, having a constant stake over the system's clock would make the analysis much more simpler as has been done in the original everything is a race paper so we have a new fictitious system as a zero to do that given that we have this constraint uh, on the relationship between the adversarial and honest stake we assume that the adversarial stake is at its maximum we pick a certain positive number a lambda h and evaluate a function alpha t this alpha t would become the local clock for this uh, fictitious system as a zero with respect to the local clock of the dine to system now in uh, as a zero uh, we have constant adversarial stake from the perspective of the local clock of as a zero so this uh, this graph shows the local clock of as a zero with respect to the local clock of dine to system now both the adversarial stake and the uh, and the honest stake are constant so we show that the that this in this transformation the probability of the non existence of nakamoto block within an interval of length s in dine to system is less than that in as the static system as is zero in this final transformation we upgrade the adversary by giving it additional powers let us understand why we need to do, take that step uh consider this uh, uh state of the system as s0 uh with its honest chain and adversarial trees rooted in blocks f0 and h1 observe that the depth of this adversarial trees at any time t are dependent on the location of the root block of the on the chain especially due to the randomness grinding which it can only do at the at the epoch endings uh we can have easier analysis Uh, of, of the non-existence of Nakamoto block, if the height of the adversarial trees are independent, uh, are um, are independent of the location of their root uh, on its block. So in this new system, SS1, we feature a more powerful adversarial model 
but in an adversarial node um, mines a new block at the beginning of the tree it gets an uh, it gets an uh, one time gift of c minus 1 blocks that sees the epoch length this also signifies the end of the epoch so so the adversary can grind over the randomness tree. after that uh, the uh, the adversary operates as it operated before and there are no more gifts similarly for the other adversarial trees we show that the uh, that the non existence of nakamoto block in ss0 is bounded by that in ss1 now in uh, in the static system ss1 we analyze the non existence of the nakamoto block in any sufficiently long uh, interval of length s to do so we employ the techniques from everything is a race paper first we analyze the growth rate of the adversarial trees in ss1 using branching random walks then we show that if this particular condition is satisfied then uh, then and then and then following ev events following two events uh, happens for every block within the interval length s with negligible probability so the first event is that any nearby adversarial trees can catch up with the fictitious honest chain honest chain very soon uh, happens with uh, happens with very negligible probability the second event that any adversarial tree catches up with the fictitious honest chain far ahead in time also happens with negligible probability this would imply that the event that there are no nakamoto blocks in an interval of length s happens with negligible probability now the question is what is the uh, right value of c this uh, this uh, uh, right value of c the epoch length to choose from in one hand we have the dependency of the security threshold on c it shows that with increasing the value of c the security threshold approaches the desired value of 1/2 on the other hand the latency to confirm transaction is directly proportional to c this creates a tension between the uh, security threshold and latency so depending on the application uh, if you are geared for um, uh, security you would you would tune the parameter value to be a uh, bit higher if your uh, if your if your application is tuned for uh, 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 less latency then you will tune then you'll have your parameter c to be less bit less and uh, so this is how you choose the value of c so to summarize uh, our work so poset successfully guarantees uh, proof of works dynamic availability and uh, unpredictability while being provably secure under honest majority so for future work one direction we have been taking is to uh, think about thinking about taking it is to upgrade poset to have uh, to uh, to have the feature of dynamic stick so in our current uh, model of poset every node has a uh, static stick that remains same from the genesis how in practice adversaries can grind on keys of their account and transfer stake to useful accounts having dynamic stake would safeguard poset from such grinding attack another path forward going uh, for uh, uh, is to see is to see uh, is to see whether one can one can build a dynamically available proof of stake protocol that does not require any dependence on proof, on the and the error of time such as bdn finding an impossible res impossibility result or otherwise in this regard would be interesting that's all uh, from for my talk Awesome, perfect.